Okay, what what can you see now? Cisco uh, Academy. Cisco. Yeah. Okay, now Spectrum, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, just a reminder, I've already shared the token, seed token for CCNA. Uh, I can see only around 50 students register. So there are another 30 over students who have not registered yet. So please do so. Please also help me to remind your friend. I already sent an email just now to remind because hopefully by uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, I will start op uh, opening the uh, start to open the uh, online uh, curriculum test okay, for all. Okay. So please do so for those who haven't done that. Okay. Uh, uh, as usual, attendant always remember this attendant. To attendant, uh, the uh, password is F FSKTM. Okay, you can help me type in the chat. The password is FSKTM, small uh, letters. FSKTM. So click on the attendant. Some of already done that. Okay. Okay. Now we will continue with our second chapter. I don't want to wait. Okay. Uh, this because our class should start at one. There are a lot of things to cover. Securing network devices. To me, uh, this is not uh, difficult topics. Okay. I, I I prefer this kind of topic because these are more practical. Some topic they are theoretical. Uh, theoretical is a bit hard okay, because you, know, you just uh, I can only present. But this uh, chapter, especially chapter two, uh, is a more practical. Uh, so they give some uh, introduction and then they explain to you okay what uh, in terms of configuration. Okay. Okay, what we will cover, okay, these are uh, long topics, yeah. this, uh, introduction and then securing, assigning administrative roles, uh, monitoring and managing devices, using automated security features, securing and, uh, the control plane, summary. So hopefully I will finish uh, within one hour and so. Or so. Uh, the first part is basically securing the device access. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's very important for us to configure our network infrastructure. For example, we have our uh, router, we have our switches, and you already configure. You harden the router, you harden the switcher, you give very difficult password, uh, uh, very difficult secret uh, password. But then. Uh, uh, somebody manage, eh? somebody managed to get into yeah, your router. For example, they managed to steal your password or they, they, they know your secret, uh, then they managed to get into your uh, router configuration. Once they see this type of prompt, uh, you see this prompt? I think there's some. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hasta ni. Is that somebody talking just now? Any anything? Okay. You can see this. Once you see this prompt, hash prompt, means you are now already inside the level what I call privilege level fifteen. Basically, you can do anything with the router. For example, okay, somebody managed to get into, they can erase start up config. They can remove your configuration. Yeah. And then they can also do more harm. For example, they can even delete your uh, iOS. Right? They can delete your configuration. They can delete your iOS. Then you die. Yeah. Okay. The worst case, maybe they just still, if they cannot go inside your 
router, they can uh, simply steal your router. That's why uh, in the first chapter, they stress upon the importance of perimeter security okay, outside and even uh, when somebody managed to get inside, uh, then there's some more physical security that we can enforce. So this is very important. Why very important for us to configure uh, the what I call uh, the, to harden our router configuration. Yeah? Okay, single router. How do we con uh, secure our router? Basically, we can have single router approach. For example, in this case, yeah? uh, router. We know the purpose of the router is to route the packet. Okay? But at the same time, the router has the capability to implement uh, some aspect of security. Later, we will do that. Yeah, this will show how we can do that in this chapter. Uh, since it is dedicated for routing, so it's not built for uh, security. So there is a disadvantage there. Okay, okay the first uh, approach is basically to use single router approach. So everything all the security things that we uh, uh, we configure basically inside this router. So you can think also at home, you have a router at home, a Wi-Fi router. So your Wi-Fi router is also uh, implement some aspect of security, right? Okay, we can have what I call the second approach, uh, defense, uh, defense in depth, yeah? defense in depth approach. So we have our router, so people from internet, yeah? people from internet, they can go, they will go through, first through your router. We implement some aspect of security here, and then they, it has to go through the firewall, and then before they can get into our local network, it has to go through another router, and we can also enforce some security aspect uh, in this too. Right? So meaning we have a dedicated firewall, later in chapter Ten, if I'm mistaken, we are going to look in. Uh, we are going to learn about firewall, and then you are going to configure firewall. Yeah, so I will uh, explain to you how we can do that uh, using uh, GNS3. Okay, so that's why I want you to start uh, uh, installing GNS3 and play around with GNS3. Yeah, so become uh, later on when we come to especially uh, this part is a bit difficult right, to in, to install the firewall. And then the, the third approach is basically DMZ, okay? demilitarized zone. So we have similar uh, topology like the second approach, but then there is another uh, network that we call it DMZ. This is where we put all our uh, servers it's normally. Yeah? We have our servers here. Uh, this server for people from inside, uh, from inside uh, to easily connect to the DMZ. But people from outside, they have the, uh, we, we want to allow them to access as well, but with some protection. Yeah. So the, this is what we call DMZ. Later, when we configure ASA, uh, we will come back to this yeah, DMZ approach. So there are three uh, security uh, approach that we can implement in our organization, right? So three areas of router security, physical security. We learned about this in chapter one. We, we make, uh, we put what we call a perimeter. Yeah, we give perimeter, uh, we put fences, yeah, SS card and so on, physical security. And then we can secure our OS. Yeah. Just now I said, okay, one, once people get into your router, they can easily, uh, they can easily delete yeah, your uh, operating system. Okay, they can format, basically uh, it's like our PC, people uh, manage to get into our PC, they can format our hard disk. A similar concept with uh, router, so they can also they, they can also some sort of uh, we, we we say format eh? our router. They basically remove the operating system. Once they do do that, basically you are going to die. Yeah? Or they can also delete the configuration file. Yeah? During uh, in our lab, you we, you you may not feel important because uh, in the lab okay uh, only few lines of uh, configuration uh, uh, you do but in real implementation there will be thousands of lines of configuration yeah? that's why we want to secure that yeah? uh, and then router hardening this is what we are going to look uh, later yeah and then what what we can use uh, what we can do in router hardening 
uh, this is from our curriculum yeah you can find this same thing from our uh, curriculum just uh, just copy and put it here for example secure administrative control yeah only authorized person have access and then we disable unused spot yeah so very important as well people can simply bring once they are inside your organization uh, they can bring the device and then plug into the one of the available port and then become part of the uh, network yeah, so we don't want that weapon so that's why it's not used then we disable yeah? and then we can also disable unnecessary services yeah, you notice some uh, uh, there are services running uh, dscp serv uh, service uh, ldp protocol running uh, uh, CDP protocol officially yes. Cisco discovery protocol okay. so I can run this the same the protocol I can know okay who is my neighbors okay. I can know my neighbors for example uh, router one router one is my neighbors okay. so I can uh, by running CDP yes Cisco discovery protocol I know I can know okay what is operating system iOS is running what version of the uh, iOS is running? Yeah. So from there, okay, now I can start uh, finding okay what are the weakness, what weaknesses maybe of this uh, iOS. Okay. So there are some services that we may not want that to run by by default. Yeah. Okay, there are, these are the tasks eh, for if you want to implement sec secure administrative access. Okay, you want to restrict device accessibility lock and account for all access we want to add uh, authenticate access authorized action yeah, only certain action can be done by uh, uh, the user yeah, and then we put legal notification this banner of the day you learn this in session a yeah. uh, ensure the confi confidentiality of data right okay you know about telnet yeah we have done this, this is how you want to access your router Right, we can have secure. We can have serial uh, connection. If you have access to the lab, I'm I'm not sure your best. Did you manage? Did you uh, access to our C C N A lab before? Maybe you can uh, type in chat. Eh? Type in yeah. Chat eh? Only okay. two months. Only two months. Oh, very unfortunate. Okay. So only to my you you uh, how do you connect to your router by basically you have to bring you have to use your serial cable yeah we can uh, we have our uh, what I call uh, we run our telnet on this PC on this PC and then we have our console cable sorry console cable yeah serial console cable this one console connect to the console the the light blue color cable yeah. Uh, so that uh, that is the console cable and then we can configure our router okay beside that we can also have remote access uh, either using telnet or using kssh yeah that's why you can use uh, when you use putty you we can have either we can uh, have option to run telnet or we can uh, we have we can have uh, option to run uh, kssh yeah okay maybe I, uh, actually i already set up a demonstration Okay, can you see my uh, GNS3? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, doctor. Okay, so this one, uh, last week I uh, had problem. Now I've already solved this, uh, this problem already. Yeah. Okay, I have, we can have this topology, for the simple topology, I may create this simple topology, and then this virtual PC. Uh, I remove this, okay, remove this, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. I can have this yeah, running. For example, uh, this is uh, my laptop. This is my uh, uh, connected to my loopback address. Yeah. You just take note first. Yeah. You just take note, and then you try to find out how uh, you can uh, connect this genesis 3 to your loopback address meaning now i can run my uh, i can run my command line okay, okay you can see my uh, command uh, windows yeah okay i can now ping okay i can check okay i ip config 
Uh, the one that we I'm using here is basically this address. Ethernet three is basically my. Uh, oh, I didn't give default gateway. Okay, new mind. Just to to solve this question, uh, I need to configure default gateway. Change adapter option. Sorry. Okay. So I put inside this, yeah, standard one. Just now there's uh, somehow missing. I don't know why it's missing. Okay, so I put this. This is my loopback address. Yeah, this is my loopback uh, interface. Sorry, loopback interface connected to my uh, PC. So IP config. Uh, this is my loopback address. It's trust please. Mm. Yeah, I just try to pin if I can. One, two, one, six, eight. One. Okay, I can ping this. Basically, from my laptop, I can ping to my router. Okay, now I can open this. <laughs> I can open this PC as well, virtual PC. Normally, this virtual PC have no problem. Just connect, and then you can <clears throat> uh, you can easily ping to your router. But with, with uh, look back, there will be some uh, issue. Yeah, sometimes you have to solve first before you can do that. Ping 192.168.10.1. So I can ping that. So now actually basically you can ping from this PC to this router interface FS01 that I already pre-configured before uh, last week. Yeah? And then this, from this laptop, I can ping to this. Yeah? And then I can go to this uh, my router console. Uh, my console. Okay, this one my router. Show. Oh, okay, okay. Hi. Okay, so I give up. Figure terminal, router. Okay, just uh, quickly run my OSPF first. OSPF 1. Let it work. 0.0.0.0. Want to include every single interface. Okay, just put this very uh, area 0. I quickly save. I need to go to my second one console. Same thing here. Bigger terminal router OSPF one network. Okay, I will include all interface. Two five five two five five area zero. So IP route. Okay, now I can see. Oh, not yet. I hope there is no issue because uh, yesterday it works. <laughs> okay. IP route. Okay, not yet. some time so IP route okay now I already learned the router one already learned about this network yeah and then router two hopefully they already uh, learn about this network so once they do that so mean uh, meaning I I'm supposed to be able to ping from PC one to PC two PC two is 20.10 so I can go quickly to PC two PC one so now I will ping Ping 192.168.20.10, which is okay, PC2. 
So basically from PC1, I can ping to PC2. Yeah. So PC2 should be able to ping PC1 as well. And then from my laptop, now I can run PuTTY. Yeah, PuTTY. Yeah. And then uh, there's option Telnet, uh, SSH, so I'm choosing SSH. And then I will, uh, con okay, load this one. Okay, this is the IP address of router one, this side, yeah. Okay, I have this. Yeah, this one, admin, yeah. So, manage to go to router one from my PC, admin, admin, uh, what is the password? Cisco, Okay, Cisco. <laughs> yeah. So running. So I can now telnet from my uh, PC to the router. Okay. Because since uh, we will not be able to go to our CCNA lab, so hopefully this will uh, solve our lab is uh, uh, configuration issue. Issue. Yeah. So we are going to implement using GNS3. So hopefully you try. Uh, so now I want you to try to install GNS3 and then try to make this thing work and then finally try to make your uh, look back. Okay? Look back. You can find easily in YouTube how the people configure this okay? using look back. So meaning this is my laptop. Okay? This is my PC. This one. So I'm connecting my putty from this one. I am telling it uh, SSH to my router. So I can do the same thing on this router as well. Right? Okay, that, that is uh, the option, the option that we have in order for us to uh, connect to our router, either directly, which you have done in your lab, or we can use Telnet. I didn't show this, but similar concept with uh, this SSH, oh, sorry, SSH, Telnet or SSH will be the same thing, just that Telnet is not secure. Meaning people who are sit, sitting in uh, between, once uh, they, they can capture the packet, they will see the username and password in clear text. Uh, because in Telnet, the way that uh, protocol works, they have to send the username and uh, password in the clear. Okay? But when you use SSH, everything will be encrypted. So people who sit in between, they won't be able to, even though they manage to capture the packet, they won't be able to read the content of the packet. So that's why it's advice uh, it's not to use Telnet anymore, but we we will use SSH, right? And then beside this, okay, this one I never ever configure. You will notice at the back plane of your router or your switch, you can see the word AUX. This is term for uh, auxiliary port that we can use to connect to our modem. Meaning, beside using uh, our normal internet, now we use uh, uh, modem connection to co uh, to connect to our router and then be able to configure our router, right? So this is another option. So either we can use remote access through Telnet SSH, or we can use also uh, using the modem and auxiliary port here. But this one actually, to be honest, I never implement this. Okay? But the option is there. Maybe you can consider. Uh, in future, if you want to configure your uh, router, your company router or your company switch, yeah, something that you can <coughs> bear eh, in mind. So. Okay, uh, how do you want to uh, be able to configure your uh, router, either locally or we can have through remote access? This is what we have learned just now. Yeah, we can configure our router, we can configure our switches, eh, our firewall. Yeah? through what we call, we can uh, create what we call management LAN. So management LAN separated from uh, normal LAN. Uh, so in this example, we have three LAN. One is management LAN and then another LAN, LAN 2 and also LAN 3. So we have we can have separated management LAN uh, for security, uh, for extra security basically. Uh, so we can <coughs> uh, dedicated management LAN. Okay, strong password. Yeah. So use a password length of 10 or more characters. Uh, basically, if you configure letter, you will do this in your uh, packet tracer exercise. 
uh, and also in your lab exercise, you we can enforce uh, so that the user enter their password, but with the minimum length of, for example, in this case, 10, or you can even enforce uh, 11, 12, and so on. So depend on the policy of the company. Yeah? Normally, we want to have longer password for security purposes, right? And then no, nowadays, you will notice that you are enforced to mix the uppercase, the lowercase, and then numbers, symbols, and sometimes spaces, right? And then we can avoid uh, password base uh, easily identify, uh, ident uh, uh, ident identifiable piece of information, right? We cannot, we, we shouldn't use anything easily to identify, right? easily guess the password. And then we deliberate, uh, deliberately misspell uh, a password. Instead of Smith, become Smith, and this is your name. And then instead of this, become this. Or better still, if we can use this, right? Change password often. Uh, do not write the password or don't leave them in the obvious places. Okay, so weak password, for example, here. Right? Weak password, and then uh, strong password like this. Right? So normally we are encouraged to do this, but it's hard to remember, isn't it? Eh? Hard, difficult for us. Today maybe remember, and then after tomorrow, then we uh, uh, we have to reset our password again because we don't remember our password. Okay, that, uh, okay, that is the case. Maybe I can uh, if we go back to this. Uh, maybe I can demo quickly demonstrate this again. Okay, you know, this is our topology. And then, okay, uh, I will go to router 2. So we go to router 2. Just put that route, uh, router 2 there. So we can. I just want to demonstrate to you the password. Okay? Uh, console. Router 2. Configure terminal. Okay, let's say I enable uh, password. Let's say Cisco, yeah, Cisco. Enable password Cisco, and then I put the second thing. Uh, enable secret. This enable secret you have chosen is the same. Oh, okay, they cannot allow it. Okay, let's say Cisco two, yeah. Enable Cis uh, secret Cisco two, right? So do show run. Okay, just want to show you here, yeah. Okay, what is the issue with password? Yeah, what is the issue with password? Maybe you can type. Yeah? You type in the comment. Yeah, it's in plain text. Yeah, in clear in yes. clear uh, clear text. Yeah, yes. clear text. So is it mandatory to use as well for? Uh, no, it's not mandatory. Uh, we you can as you say you can use static routing. You can use RIP. You can use EIGRP. Yeah, even you can use ISIS, okay? the most, the four uh, popular routing protocol uh, that we can implement. Uh, implement, right? Uh, but you have to remember some devices because you know before EIGRP is a Cisco proprietary, right? Meaning only Cisco devices will implement that because it belong to Cisco. But but since I can I can't remember what year. Uh, uh, Cisco already make it open, so anybody can implement that. But I, uh, so far I don't see any uh, other company besides Cisco that implement EIGRP. That's why if you use Cisco device, you can have option EIGRP. Okay, let, let me quickly show you what I mean. Router. Okay, I will quickly here. So there are option here. BGP. Okay, let the, this one is actually for one connection. Yeah. Uh, we are not going to configure this, but they will will touch this in CCNA. And you will learn this in CCNA. Right? EIGRP, for example, yeah, and then we have uh, OSPF. Yeah, this three I'm not that uh, familiar. Yeah, this three, this one. But you can. There are too many. There are many many things we can we can do. Yeah. So basically, these four uh, for local network EIGRP, ISIS. OSPF, RIP. So four options that we can use yeah, to configure, uh, to configure our routing. 
Uh, for as I said, EIGRP is only for Cisco, meaning Cisco proprietary. Uh, then you can see this. Okay, but as I uh, now it's open, so other devices they can also implement this if they want. So last time when I learned uh, Ruiji, this uh, company belong to China. This uh, Ruiji from China, they have OSPF, they have RIP, but they don't have EIGRP. If you if you read uh, in any publication, so people will advise to use OSPF okay? because this is uh, this one is can, they, they can cater very big topology, one of the advantages, okay? and then very fast as well. Okay? Any changes okay? up and down, they can detect very quickly and then distribute uh, very, very fast. Right? Okay, we go back to this one. Yes, now. Okay, you can see this. We can see our password and also uh, in clear text. Okay? And then how do you want to make it a bit difficult yeah, to see? So we can type one more command. Uh, service. Yeah, service. Password. Encryption. Yeah? So we password encryption. Show. Do show run. So I quickly go back here. Uh, now we cannot, yeah, we cannot uh, read the password. Yeah? But still, actually, this is level seven, yeah. Level seven, you can quickly go and read in this uh, uh, different level of uh, route. Uh, what I call uh, password. So you can go to this side. I copy as well inside our chat chat room. Okay. okay, you can click that and then you can read uh, more. If you can read more information about this one, okay. type type zero means will not be encrypted at all. Okay. The initially when you read Cisco, you can see the, this uh, the originally before I type uh, service pass password encryption. You can read Cisco, isn't it? Okay, okay this one. This is basically level zero, right? So once you type uh, service password encryption, now become uh, type seven, okay? type seven. But type seven actually still very easy to break. So I just want to demonstrate to you. Okay, just now. Okay, we type this. Okay, we know the answer is Cisco. Just want to we just want to test this. Okay, I'll just copy this, and then I will go to. You can easily search in the internet. How people can, uh, how we can, uh, they can break this. Okay. Okay. This side. Password cracker. Okay, I copy this in chat room as well, in our chat. Okay, I will copy. I will copy the password just now. Okay, this password. Okay. Copy that and then I put here and then you click. You can see quickly Cisco. Right? So very easy to crack. If we use secret, okay, this one secret is a bit difficult to crack, but still possible. Okay, so I can quick. This is MD5. Right? So I can copy this. And then I, okay, I can copy here. This is for type 7. So I can go here, type five. We try. It's a bit difficult, yeah, bit difficult, but possible. Yeah, uh, they won't be able to break this. Uh, you have to go to other website. I, did, uh, I didn't uh, do the search. You can go. They say you can, you can easily break, uh, crack this. But this one really need, really need what they call. Uh, the way they do it is basically to to use brute, uh, brute force. Meaning they need a dictionary. Okay, they need a dictionary. For example, they know my name is Rosli. So most likely I will have Rosli part of their dictionary. Okay, they include that in the, the in the dictionary. So if I copy this, okay, this is example given. Yes, yeah, secret file, let's say you this this. And then I copy this and I paste here. Already inside the, the dictionary. So the answer is password. Okay, that is why 
you are we are not encourage eh, your student uh, student use password as part of our uh, what I call uh, uh, password. Yeah, you cannot use password eh, as your password, right? Okay, so service part. Uh, this is what I mean just now. You can enforce okay minimum length ten, minimum length eleven, twelve, and so on. And then service password encryption make it a bit difficult for user to read, but still, if they can remember the name, yeah, we want this one is basically to prevent uh, shoulder surfing attack. Meaning you are you type uh, you are sitting in front of your computer, people stand behind you and then they try to do to capture the password. If they can remember this, yeah, if you use type seven, they see okay you are using type seven, they remember this number. They can easily go to the website that I give, uh, for example, the website I give just now. They can crack that. Right? So that's why we don't want to use type 7 if possible. Right? And then for the secret, we should use very difficult password to guess. Right? Because they use dictionary attack, meaning they put all possible uh, words that people always use. And then if you are unfortunate, you use the same password that is already inside the dictionary, they can easily crack that, right? So MD5 is difficult, but still possible, right? So enable, okay, we can, uh, beside MD5, there are also more, more difficult encryption that we can use. Script, SHA, yeah, for example. If we type, you type enable secret and then Cisco, they, simp they will automatically uh, use MD5, yeah, Autom automatically use MD5. But we can also have option script or SHA25. This is more difficult to uh, decrypt, basically. Yeah, if you want to have more security, then we should uh, have the option to use SHA uh, script or SHA25. Okay, if you, okay, if I go back to this one, yeah, you will notice. Okay, I'm, I'm, I will go to this uh, router one. Okay, I'll go to this router one. Okay. This router one, yeah? I'll go to this router one. Okay, and then I, okay, just copy exactly the same. Configure terminal. Enable, okay, enable, just now I said enable uh, secret. Secret. And then you want to type algorithm type, yeah? but it's not here. That's why in uh, if, even if you use packet tracer, this option is not inside the the packet tracer uh, router that they give. Yeah? They don't simulate this. So that's why I said we have to have a real device with the real uh, operating system, iOS operating system. Uh, also, uh, but most importantly, the version is 15. 15.3 and above. 15.3 and above. So if you see here, I can quickly show uh, do show version. Okay, my operating system is actually 12.4. So if you have this 12.4 or even 15.1.2, you won't be able to type that algorithm type. You won't be able to see this. Yeah. Won't be able to see where is it? Okay, you you won't be able to type this. Enable algorithm type. Oh, sorry, enable algorithm type. So I will go back to this one. Enable algorithm type. Yeah, there's no algorithm type. So that's why I encourage you to use viral image. I mentioned this last week. But then I didn't manage to make it run because, as I said, I have problem with my PC. I reinstalled GNS3, uh, updated the latest version, plus I use a new laptop here. Uh, but then I didn't manage to make it uh, run last week. But now uh, I, I did, uh, already saw it. So I have this viral image. Just take note, yeah, viral image, V I R L, right? Viral image. Uh, so I go to this viral image, console to my viral image, okay, configure terminal, 
enable so i type this one you can see i have this option algorithm type okay algorithm l al, l go type and then i have the option md5 script or sha okay so okay that's why i want you to uh, try to install viral image i put here virl l okay viral image okay? virl image okay so viral image uh, you can get help from cisco try to work in group you have you already uh, established group members try to help each other yeah you i believe you're going to face a lot of problem when you try to install the you want to find the image yeah so try to do to do that first maybe uh, wednesday i will try to help you if i uh, manage to if i know how to, to do it yeah? because my problem may not same uh, same to your problem yeah a lot of problem maybe it depend on your pc that you are running that operating system they are running you face the maybe uh, different uh, problem so there is no single rule okay if there, this problem maybe I, I will be able to uh, solve your problem okay uh, so that's why in order for us to practice most of this command so we need to have the viral image you have to viral image and then we can practice this algorithm type yeah but if not then you can simply use a uh, normal router uh, as long as you understand okay there these are possible option yeah to do okay so if not then you can simply use enable secret and then you just enter the secret in between this is how we can change the types of algorithm uh, besides using md5 because MD5, you can search in the internet how to crack the, the MD5 as well. The one I gave you, the, that website, it's not, uh, it's not that good. You, you, you should try to find uh, other website that, 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 uh, that have probably more uh, dictionary. Yeah? Okay, uh, securing, uh, securing line access. This is line console zero. Okay, what is the purpose of line console zero? Okay, quickly go here. Remember my topology. Always remember this so that I don't have to every time open this one. Yeah? Okay, this is my router 2. So I'll go to my router 2 just to demonstrate. Router 2. And exit. Okay. Okay, this is uh, when we log out from our uh, router. Okay, we, you sh should see this type of screen. Yeah? And then you type oops router 2 okay i think i need to configure something uh, show run line console line console 0 okay guys okay sorry i have to configure this configure terminal line console 0 uh, log in Okay, password, password, uh, Cisco. Okay, I put password and then log in. And then actually privilege. Okay, this one should, shouldn't should be level 15. Okay, I'll show you what happened. Uh, once I managed to go to line console zero, mean I, I'm already in privilege level, the top level. Eh? Remember, top privilege, uh, privilege level means the top uh, privilege. You can do anything. You are now basically the administrator okay just do this first okay later i will change that because the default is clearly level uh, level one the default but uh, <clears throat> since we use gns3 uh, you download the ios some already they, they change the default right so exit the password now they ask the password cisco now I already in level 15. Show privilege. Okay, I'm level 15. Level 15 means I'm the admin. Yeah? This one shouldn't be like this. The default actually line console zero. Uh, village village level back to show run. uh privilege yeah? privilege okay sorry privilege 
privilege level one should be okay the default actually this and exit okay password cisco and then okay this is the prompt okay show privilege current privilege is level one yeah it's not like just now suddenly you are inside this prompt Enable privilege Cisco. Oh, I can't remember now password that I type. Enable Cisco one. Wait, Cisco one. Okay, never mind. Yeah, now I don't remember the password. Okay, uh, what I was trying to show just now is basically. Okay, you type login line console zero. Uh, in my case, I'm using the password that I enter here, password Cisco, right? In this example, they say, okay, no password because the password you get from local database. Okay, what is local database? This is the local database, username, Bob, and then the secret is Cisco 54321. Okay, so in order for us to use local database, okay, you have to configure your username. And who uh, uses yeah, that is allowed to uh, get into your uh, router? Yeah, so that's why login local. Just now I just type password Cisco login. So meaning it will use the password that I type, right? So in uh, another way, a di a different way basically to use login local. So it will get the name and password from this database. Username is Bob and secret is Cisco 542. Okay, so we can do similar thing in our auxiliary port and also in our VTY. This is where we SSH or we telnet. Okay? I did configure this because uh, just now you can see that I'm, I did manage to uh, tell uh, SSH to my uh, router. Okay, all this uh, you have, uh, you will learn in session A, or maybe you have already learned this. Right? Just to recap what we have <coughs> should know. Okay, configure and security for which you log in. You know, we put this uh, banner, the banner just to give warning to those who access our system. Okay? It can be a legal uh, <coughs> uh, action against uh, those who, who access if they already see this. Uh, banner, yeah. They say okay, unresisted access. You are not allowed to do. Okay, give some warning to the user, but still, if they access that, meaning that you, you can take actions against them, right? Okay, implement delays between successive login attempt. Okay, let's say in one minute, the people try to have a uh, five attempt. They try to uh, uh, fail uh, five attempt, and then you want to delay. Okay, next login after three minutes. Okay, so that's why delay. We can implement this because we don't want uh, to have what they call people uh, brute force yeah, into our system. They try one by one. They try one uh, password, another password, third password, and so on. Okay, we want to have delays. So meaning, if you implement this, you will take hard. Uh, it's a bit harder for them to uh, to break into the system because after five attempts, they have to wait. Then wait for maybe three, four minutes. It depend on how long we configure. Enable login shutdown if those attacks are suspected, for example, and then we can capture whatever attempt that people try to, to access our system okay, when people try to access our system. So this is how we can configure this. You will do this in your session A uh, exercise packet tracer, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in your lab as well. So I'll, uh, I think I have to just quickly, yeah, but we don't have much time. Yeah. Login block for uh, how many seconds? This is very important to notice. Second, yeah. either second, minutes, depend. Yeah. If you thought this is minute and then you put 100, uh, 100 second, you thought it's a second, but then it's actually minutes. So you put hundred. So meaning people have to wait for hundred minutes. Okay. And then log in quiet mode. Okay. This is when uh, when this is blocked. Yeah. People block the uh, access to the router because somebody try and then it's already blocked, meaning uh, valid user also they cannot access 
uh, your the router or the uh, switches. Okay, so what we can do is actually to implement some sort of backdoor. Yeah, backdoor. We want to allow only authorized person with certain IP address, for example, you know, uh, for them to have access to the router. And then we can give delay, and then we can uh, 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 success. We can lock them. Whoever have uh, what time they have access, okay? and then who access that, so we can capture that. Or we can also lock the failure. Yeah. So we can lock the success. We can lock also the failure. So these are things that you may not learn in CCNA. Yeah. And we learn this in uh, security, in network security. Okay, this is our example. Login block for 120 seconds. This is not minutes. That's why uh, good if you log in, log for, and then question mark. You can see, okay, they enter second. Okay, second means 120 seconds. Meaning they want to uh, block for two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. Uh, after five attempt, within one minute. Okay. If somebody attempt with, uh, with uh, what they call a uh, wrong password five attempt within one minute with wrong password the system will block for 120 seconds yeah, or two minutes and then this is quiet mode we want to allow if the the system already block you from accessing the router because of uh, somebody tried to brute force into your router or your switches then we can have a back door uh, that we want to allow only those from this IP addresses to log in. Yeah, right? uh, doesn't matter whether it's already blocked or not. Yeah? So we can use this. Right? And then we can delay. Yeah? After up, uh, every single uh, attempt should be delayed. For example. Okay, lock on success, lock on failure. Okay, show lock failure, for example. Yeah? And then configuring SSH. Uh, sorry, I already did this. Yeah, you just need to follow this. You need to give host name. That is the first thing, and then you give. You have to give the domain name. Domain name. So in this case, the host name is R1. The domain name is pan.com. It will generate a key that will uh, given the name r1.span.com. Uh, that's why very important to give uh, host name and also the domain name. Yeah, they. Uh, and force you to enter these two first, right? Then only you can generate the key. If we use uh, SSH version two, like the ex this example, you need to have the key uh, more than I, if I'm not mistaken, 124 size B. Yeah? If we use version two, so in this case we enforce version two. The key must be higher than this. Yeah? If not, you won't be able to. Uh, SSH to your router, even though you manage to create the key, because by default, 512, yeah, 512, but then you, you can change, 512, 1024, and so on, right? and then you can change the version, and then very important as well, you need to type who is able to access uh, through this uh, SSH, yeah? and then line with the Y, 04, okay, what is the meaning of 04, anyone? Even you can type. Maybe next time I will try to find a like whiteboard. Maybe you can type the answer there. Okay, what's the meaning of uh, line zero four? Okay, from zero to four. Okay, good. I think I can understand your answer. So, at, uh, if you configure line VTY zero four, meaning at one time, five percent can access. Uh, in this example can SSH to your router at the same time, 5%, meaning VTY0, 1%, VTY1, 2, 3, 4, right? So 5%. So 5% at one time can SSH to your system. Okay, what if you want to allow only 1%? What will you do? Line VTY, 0, 0. Only 1% can have access to your router at one time. Yeah, and then the rest zero zero. Yeah, okay, zero zero. Line with the Y zero zero. We need only one. Two percent line with the Y zero one. Right, and then some router you have they can have like up to sixteen, up to thirty two, which I 
don't think you need that many users, right? Uh, so by the rest of the uh, no login, yeah? so basically the rest of the VTY, we put them in default. We don't want to allow transport input SSHs or uh, anything, yeah? or transport input tenant. We don't want to allow them. So basically we put them into no transport input SSH. Basically nobody can get into VTY. Okay? We only open VTY 0, 0 or 0, 1 up, up to how many percent you want to uh, allow them. Yeah? So this is what you need to configure in your router. And then after that, like I already demonstrated just now, because I already pre-configured this, because we, I don't have time to configure in front of the uh, system, uh, uh, life. Yeah? Uh, we don't have that much time. So this is the step that you need to do in order for you to configure, right? And then once you already configure key, you can type yeah? show crypto key, my public key RSA. They will print you. Yeah? It's one of the key is private key. One of them, another one is uh, private key. Okay. Public key will be shared by people who are accessing your sy uh, system. Just now, when I type putty, as I say, first time, they will ask me, okay, should I uh, download this public key? Also, you have to accept yes. Okay. Deep, uh, in this case, if I configure line with TY04, mean up to five people, okay, five percent. So if your router can support more, like just now I said, they can support up to uh, 16, 0 to 15, meaning at any one time, 16 pe uh, people can SSH to your router. Right? So depend, the maximum depend on uh, how many uh, VTY line are supported by your router, okay? by the operating system and also the router. If you see here, maybe I can quickly go back to my, uh, this, okay, this one, I already forgot the password. Uh, line VTY, okay, we go to our line VTY, okay, it's only four. Okay, let me quickly see my viral image. Enable algorithm. You can include only line with way. Just lazy to type it. Uh, slow, very slow. Okay, the problem with, with uh, viral image actually is slow. Yeah? I think it's very big size. And VTY, okay, same thing here, 04. Okay. But, but if you use packet tracer, you will notice some with 015, meaning 16%. Uh, I, I've seen live uh, real router, 0 to 31. Okay. So meaning 32 uh, people can access at the same time. Uh, like I said just now, I don't see why the need to have 32 people access your router from remote. Okay, okay I don't see why you need that, okay? That's why we can uh, control, even though they support uh, 32 user, but you want to open only 0 to 1, meaning you only allow 2% to access your router at the same time, right? Even though you can support more, but then you, we can limit. That's why line VTY 04 is not always type 04. You can type line VTY 01, meaning 2%, or 02, 3%. Okay. Or zero four maximum in our case five percent, right? I hope that answer uh, your question. And then you can show IP SSH configure terminal, yeah, and so on. Okay, two way to connect enable SSH, right? We can uh, SSH from the putty just now. This is the second option I use just now. I use putty. I SSH to the uh, SSH enable router. But we can also use our uh, router to con to SSH to another router, right? So the router, one router SSH to another router. That's why we can do that as well, right? Okay, there are two options here, right? Okay, assigning MC role. Okay, privilege level. I don't have time to demonstrate. Okay, it's already one hour. Okay, it's already one hour. Privilege level. There are a lot of things we can cover here, yeah? By default, 
maybe I can quickly show you just now when I say level one and level zero, if you still remember. Yeah? This one, there's no line console zero. So already line console zero is not configured, meaning they just, once you log in, straight away, you are inside the router. Yeah, I don't configure anything. So show preview. Privilege, show, show privilege. Yeah? You have to spell it correctly. Yes, okay, show privilege. The privilege is level 15. Okay? Uh, my router 2 just now, I show you I have privilege 1. I configure privilege 1. But now I cannot go to my router. Uh, never mind. Yeah? Just, just remember this. When you read this, okay, level 0 predefined for user level access privilege and then uh, and then we can go to level one uh, the default from and then level 15 is the maximum this is where we can do anything with the router or the switches but in between we have the configurable level we can configure level two okay that user i give level two that user i give level five that user i give level uh, 10 and so on you cannot give uh, once you give level 15 mean they can do, they can do everything okay the lower level meaning the uh, the command that they can enter is more limited yeah you study season a you never configure this yeah but it's just, uh, you just need to under, uh, know that okay there, there is option for example okay i want to have uh, support staff that can only uh, send report, for example. They can show IP route, yeah? and then uh, they can report that. Yeah? So you want to have people with support staff. So we can configure different level, beside level one and level 15. Okay, I can give that support uh, user level uh, two, for example. And then I need to say, okay, this level two will only be allowed to type certain command for example just now i say show ip route right okay then i have to say okay level two can do show ip route level two user is support and uh, uh, the name is uh, support and then i give password okay? so all of them they give some example here okay username support uh, uh, we give uh, level five the privilege level five and then the secret is cisco Again, in between, you can uh, give uh, different algorithm type right, uh, beside MD5. Okay? If you use normal router, you cannot do that. Eh? If you use viral image, okay, you can do. Uh, you can type this, right? So we cannot type this. So you just ignore this algorithm type script. You just type username, support, privilege five, and then secret Cisco five. Okay, what this user can do? This is what they can uh, you can do. Privilege execute. You can uh, only execute ping, right? And then you want to give a different user, junior admin, for example. We have another user called junior admin. So same thing, you create uh, junior admin with the password Cisco 10, yeah? the secret Cisco 10. But what junior admin can do, it can reload. Yeah? It can reload. If you want to have you have more then you have to type more now privilege execute level 10 show running config for example you can you have to type all command that you want the, the junior admin to be able to configure for example right so it's a bit hard actually yes it's hard but this is how uh, one way where we can control okay uh, action yeah, that the user can do the command that the user can enter for example. okay i mentioned just now okay junior admin level 10 right and then we have support staff level 5 okay by default this privilege level say if you are higher level you can automatically configure whatever command given to the lower level so meaning now junior admin can also do ping but for support staff since he is in level 5, he cannot do reload. 
right? Okay, this is how we can control uh, by using privilege learning, right? Okay, this is the theory is behind this is this. Uh, the configuration wise, there are a lot of things we can do with, with it. Yeah? I think I don't have time to show you. I already did some, you know, play around with this privilege level. Actually, if I want, I can demonstrate to you. But since time eh, is <clears throat> time is limited, so we can I cannot do that here. Yeah? Okay, no access control, limitation of this privilege level, no access control to USB interface. Once you allow the uh, interface, mean they can configure all interfaces. If there is a command you want to enable. Okay? For example, you want to uh, enable, uh, sorry, privilege, they call it interface, eh? instead uh, security, okay, privilege interface, uh, 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 interface, and then you have, you can type whatever interface you want them to configure, right? Uh, once you do that, so all the interface will be allowed. Okay? So no, no limitation. So that, that's an issue with the uh, privilege level. And then command available at lower privilege level are always executable at higher privilege level. People in level 5, uh, people in level 10 can all uh, do whatever level 5 percent do. Okay? Because level 10 is higher than level 5. And then commands basically set at higher privilege level are not available for lower privilege level. So meaning people at level 5 just now, the support staff, cannot do whatever command done by people at the higher level. Okay? And then assigning a command with multiple people will allow access to all command that use those. For example, you want to uh, enable show interfaces, but then by default, show also will be allowed, right? By default. So this is an all this limitation. I think once you start to play around with this, you, you will be able to see uh, the, this issue, yeah? Okay, okay, that is one way using privilege level. But now we can use another way, what we call role based CLI. You will do this if I'm not mistaken in your uh, packet tracer exercise. Yeah, we just go through, you get some idea, the real exercise you do packet tracer, and then a um, lab as well. I'm not sure. Okay, but anyway, you, you uh, come after that, you come back to this slide. Yeah, I believe you will be able to understand what's trying to explain. So this is enabled in iOS release 12.3, 11 and above, right? So meaning if you have a version, lower version, you won't be, uh, uh, this command will not be uh, enabled, right? So for example, role-based CLSS, uh, security, you want to enable, okay, for security operator privileges, okay, we want to allow this. For one engineer privileges, you want to allow this, okay? Yeah? Okay, configure routing, configure interfaces, and then issue uh, show command. Okay, let's say we have this. Okay, we have these requirements okay, for two people, one for security operator, the other one for one engineer. So the way we configure that, we call we can we enable what we call view. Okay, enable okay, you, we just uh, enable this view. View one allow show interfaces. View view two will allow configure terminal, show IP route. View, view 3, for example, route EIGRP, configure EIGRP. View 4 will, will be able to configure interface fast internet uh, 0. View 5 and view 6. Okay, and then I I can enable what I we, we call it, the, the term they give is super view. It's like superman. <laughs> it's not superman. Yeah? Super view. Uh, and then the super view, let's say super view, okay, this Super view will be allowed. View one, view two, view four. View one, view two, and view four. And another user, we call it simply call it super view two, will uh, allow view two, view four, uh, view five, and view six. Yeah? If you notice here, view four on this super view one, and also view uh, four in super view two. So meaning now we we can have overlap uh, commands uh, that. Uh, super view one can use, super view two can use. It's unlike the uh, privilege level just now that we have seen. So basically, this is much much better as compared to the privilege level, right? Uh, so obviously, okay, this is the way if you want to 
configure okay different types of user okay? different user they are allowed to do certain action okay this is how we configure so the command will be you will notice this command in packet tracer exercise okay, letter yeah, enable you want to enable okay which you super view one i will enable super view one okay? and then parser view is configured you want to configure parser view view one and then you want to allow uh, show interfaces right parser view view three you want to allow router eigr okay this is how we configure you and then we meet we once you are inside the view you need to give the part uh, you need to give password to that view okay so this is also very important if you don't enable this they won't allow you to enter any other commands okay? they need to enable password they call it secret they don't have password they use it and then okay what types of command is allowed either include okay i want to include okay this view number one command view one include and then you type whatever command show uh, just now uh, show interfaces right show interface. you notice this you are inside inside the view you uh, uh, already enable the view parser view view one uh, now you have to enter the secret then after that what commands are allowed inside the view one in our example we want to allow show interfaces okay Okay, parser view, configure role base. Okay, parser view. Uh, and then you want to give just now, okay, view name, view one, view two, view three to super view. Okay. And then for this super view, you have to type the secret. Okay, this is where you want to configure your super view. Okay. Okay. This parser view, and then you have to type view name, view one, view two, view three, and super view. Okay, show parser view. Okay, these are only show monitoring and managing devices. Okay, the uh, okay, just, uh, it's very important for us to secure our iOS. It's like we we don't want people to easily yeah delete the operating system. Okay, mostly in the most cases eh, uh, in our lab. Some students somehow they you know they maybe they explore and then uh, they they get into the router and then they delete the operating. It always happen in our lab. Okay, so the way to protect that is basically to have what we call uh, iOS resilient configuration features. Okay, so you can read this. So basically we have the main we maintain the iOS operating system and also the copy of the running configuration okay for the running configuration they will have different copy right for ios it will just secure the ios so people cannot uh, uh, delete the ios yeah if they want to delete that they have to go to the rom monitor mode yeah? this is the rom uh, okay this is the rom sorry sorry there's no rom monitor eh? they don't show it here okay let, i think you will see that yeah? uh, in your exercise Okay, this is simple command. Secure boot image, meaning you are now securing the iOS. And then this one, secure boot config. Now they create a, a different copy of the configuration file. Right? And then you can type show secure boot set. Okay, they show you. Okay, now I have this uh, operating system secure, this one. And also the configuration uh, file safe inside this one dot a r here okay. the two things when you type secure boot image it will create this image yeah it's not creating the image they will simply secure the image right and then the boot config it will create a different copy of the config this one they say okay secure boot config, okay ready this one okay. creating this file uh, when you show secure boot set it will show you this this two yeah this one the image and also the configuration file, right? And then when you reload a router, okay, this is one the one I want to. You have to issue break sequence, okay? Like if you have problem with your Windows, okay, you control Ethernet delete or whatever command uh, uh, key that you need to before uh, before they boot up to your Windows. You want to we want to go to the back door, right? 
So similar concept with the router, you have to type the brake, control brake, control brake, control brake. It will give you this prompt, ROM mon. Rather than router prompt, now you will see ROM mon. Uh, then only you can type, you can see, okay, direct directory, by zero, it will list the file, and then you want to reboot this. Okay? Let's say somebody, they delete the iOS, then we can remove the uh, boot the image. And then we enable configure terminal back. Uh, there's no password enter. Once you do this, it will uh, reboot. And then you type enable. There will be no password because there's no configuration file. And then you can reinstall uh, the uh, re, uh, what we call configuration file, this case. So secure, boot config, restore. This is the file just now. Yeah, Remember this file. Flash zero rescue config. So once they do that, and then we copy this file to the running configuration, now we are done. Okay. We come uh, return back to the normal operation. Right? So we, if you don't do this, once people delete this operating system, you have to reinstall back the operating system. Okay. If you do this at least, if you uh, secure the image, so if people delete this, at least okay, if they don't have access to your ROM mod, yeah, uh, then uh, we have this, uh, we can do uh, perform this boot, okay? perform this boot uh, sequence again. Okay, configure SSH, okay, scoping secure copy configurator for server side uh, secret. Uh, okay. okay, this is another option. Basically, we copy to our server okay, rather than local copy. This one local copy. Okay? We can have secure copy to different server. Okay? Uh, this one another option. So what you need to uh, do, yeah, uh, this is the step given, right? And then uh, how do you recover your router password? Uh, you should have learned this in your CCNA. Okay? So you need to, we need to go to this ROM mon, yeah? You need to go to have this uh, prompt, ROM mon prompt. That's why you need to type this. Connect this console port, record the configuration setting, yeah? power circle and switch off the router, switch on, and then uh, control break okay? and then after that uh, you change we need to change the the what they call configuration register yeah? this one has meaning actually you can type see what's the meaning of this yeah? and then uh, this one mean you want to bypass the configuration right you want to bypass the configuration so that you reboot your router they just by, bypass the configuration once you are inside the router you copy back the old configuration become the uh, current running configuration and then you can change the password right you can change the password now that's the idea basically because you don't remember the password now you can uh, change the password right by bus passing the configuration but once you are inside the router with the default prompt you can now copy back the old configuration go inside the router you can open the configuration file and then uh, after that, you can change the the uh, password. Okay. Enable secret. Now you enter a new secret password, right? Okay. No uh, password service password recovery. I mentioned this just now. Okay. But still very easy to break. Okay. Just that to prevent uh, from uh, shoulder surfing attack. People stand behind me. They see me configuring the router. I show run. They can read the password right so if you type the clear tag password very easy for them to read and remember but if we give no service password encryption at least little bit difficult because they have sequence number yeah the longer you type actually they will give uh, the, 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 the the what they call uh, the longer you type enable let me type see uh, let me show run enable password okay there's no enable okay let's say i type enable password uh, cisco okay the enable password is the same as okay enable password password rosli you can just name okay do show run okay you can see rosli yeah clear text so meaning people sit behind me I type show run, they can see, oh, the password is Rosli. 
Okay, before that, eh, provided that I didn't type this. Provided I didn't type secret, enable secret. I only have enable password, yeah? Anyone, anyone knows why? If you enter password, you also enter secret. The secret will have precedence over the password. Meaning, uh, once you start your router, they just ignore the password. They will ask you whatever secret, they, uh, the password that you type must be from the secret. Okay? Understand, yeah? So, if you, okay, imagine, I, okay, I don't have this secret. I don't type this. I only type this. Okay? So, I don't have the secret. I only have this enable password. Meaning, now, every time you log in to the router, they will ask you, okay, I have to enter Rosli in order for me to go inside my router, right? Okay, if I, now I type no uh, service password encryption. Okay. Do show run. Okay, whoever try to do uh, shoulder surfing, yeah, they sit behind me, they won't be able to easily remember this. Yeah? Rather than just now, Rosalie, okay, they can quickly remember Rosalie. So once I'm gone from my uh, terminal, they can go and then they can uh, do whatever. And once they enter the router, they can do whatever they, they want to do, right? But with this, it's difficult. But we know if they manage to get this, they can encrypt the password. Yeah? We go to the, you know, there's so many uh, websites they provide this service. Uh, they, they, you can copy this and then you can easily decrypt this. Okay, what if I type longer? Yeah? Just now I type enable uh, password. No, Rosely123. Okay. Do show run. Okay, now you can see, okay, what is the difference now? My password is longer, right? So more difficult for people to remember, right? Enable password one, two. Let's say I just type this. Okay? My password is one, two. Okay? One, two. So do show run. So what you can see? Shorter, isn't it? Yeah. So meaning, if you have longer, mean people difficult. If I just type this one, one, two, they can see easily, oh, I can copy this. I can easily remember one, oh, zero, two, five, seven, five, six. And then I can quickly go to the website and then I can decrypt this. Yeah, that's why, okay, at least if you want to use this password, but make it longer. And just now I have longer, then the number is longer, right? Okay, that's the, 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 the limitation and uh, we, we use simply uh, level uh, type 7 password. Eh? Managing and reporting. Okay, we can have a server. Eh? We can have uh, what I call uh, to manage, eh? manage access to our router by, have, by having what we call uh, either in-band management, meaning you access your router, your devices through the internet eh, that uh, people use to go to the internet as well. Yeah? So basically the same network. This is what we call in-band. Or we can have out-of-band, meaning dedicated network only for managing. Okay? We create different VLAN so that user will, will be able to configure the router or the switches or whatever devices through that VLAN only. Okay? That's, what, that's why we call management VLAN, right? Out-of-band management. Okay? This is in-band. We are sharing the same network the same VLAN with the rest of the traffic. Okay. So this is not good, basically. Right? The more than uh, more than uh, dangerous. Yeah. Syslog. Yeah, we can capture the packet. There are three, uh, several options of syslog. If you notice, you type something, you can see on your screen. Yeah. I can see type uh, uh, interface FA. I think, uh, host name. R12. Uh, hold on. Eh? What, what? Okay. Uh, interface. Okay. Interface 5800. 
interface passing it zero zero. Okay, shut down, for example. Okay, you can see this message. Yeah, you can see messages. Yeah, messages with level five security. Messages with five. Yeah. Uh, and then no shutdown. Let's say you can see messages. Okay. okay. This is level three. Yeah. Just just no, uh, take note of this. Yeah? Level three, level five, yeah? and no shutdown. The the category is a level three message, right? Uh, okay. These are the message, the login message, display on our console, right? Display on our console. By by default, okay. You I'm I'm console to my router, direct console to my router. Okay, I can see this. If I were to remove uh, just now, SSH, Telnet or SSH, I don't see this. Then you have to configure so that I can also, they can also see this. Okay? Or we can also capture whatever uh, configure, uh, login messages to our server. Okay? So there are several options for us to uh, basically see the uh, message, yeah? either from the console, or from the remote or also from the server meaning we are we lock everything to the syslog server and then after that leave letter you can monitor right uh, for example somebody access and then you want to lock that somebody change the interface you want to lock that okay? so we can do this yeah this is what you call syslog server no shutdown okay you can see message just now i did yeah change that to up three five yeah? these are option login buffer just just now yeah these are login buffer. And then we can see the console line. You are in line terminal uh, or in terminal line, line with TY0. Yeah? Uh, sorry, sorry, login buffer means they safe inside the buffer. Show login. Show, I can't remember the command. Eh? Show log, login. Show login. Uh, show login. Yeah? They safe. Uh, unfortunately, okay, th this is like looping. Once the buffer full, it will remove the previous one. Yeah. So I don't know how. Okay, you can maybe you can check. Okay, what size of this you can change that. I believe. Yeah. I never play with this. Okay, this is what we call login buffer. This is inside our router. Okay, beside this we have console line. Okay, this is inside our console. You see this? Okay, whatever inside the console automatically save inside the login buffer. Right? Okay, if you are remotely from uh, uh, from remote server, uh, from remote machine, you tell net to SSH, by default, it's not yeah, it's not going to show you any login. But we can say login, uh, you can type some, some command in order for you to enable to see the login. Right? If not, okay, let's say I re- uh, using my putty again, putty, putty, I just want to demonstrate to you, eh? okay, putty, I go back to my router one, open, login just now is admin, uh, Cisco 15, Oh, sorry, sorry. Quickly put it. There's the problem. I, I've been playing with this. I changed the password. Uh, you know, I tried dif uh, different password. And then now I, I don't remember. Admin. I think capital letter admin. And then Cisco15. Ah. Uh, ah, never mind. Ah. Okay, what I want to show you, maybe during the, the tutorial, eh, last, uh, next time, yeah? if you think, uh, anyway, I can easily explain. Okay, what it means, once you are, I'm, I'm logging, I in, uh, go to the inter interface, 5300, shut down, no shutdown. I won't be able to see this message. Okay, because by default, there is no login message sent to the terminal line. Okay, by default. Similar here, there is no login, whatever login uh, shown on the terminal sent to the syslog server. We have to enable them, we have to configure them. Uh, that's the idea. Yeah, 
because we we don't want to burden our uh, network with all this logging traffic. Okay? All this logging you send to the uh, to the network. Okay? We will we'll use a lot of uh, your your bandwidth. Okay, these are all the uh, level. Just now you see three, five. Yeah, the meaning of these are basically here. Three meaning errors, okay? and then five mean just notice. Yeah. So if you have lo loaded uh, zero, mean critical. Yeah, very serious. But seven mean if you letter when you type debug, yeah? they just want to show you. They just want to display the message. It's not critical. Okay. Uh, so I put this every alley cat eat watery noodle indoors. Yeah? So in order for you to uh, easily memorize this sequence here. And uh, this one I find in the internet. Yeah? You can search mnemonic for syslog messages. Okay, they, uh, you can uh, come across this. Yeah? So you can easily memorize this. So you, mem you remember this, you can remember the sequence. So the more the most critical is basically the this D, uh, sorry, the E, yeah, which is emergency, and then the the least difficult, the uh, critical is D, right? the, for debugging. You type debugging, uh, you can see thousand thousand of messages, so all type seven. Just now we can see type three, type five, yeah, and then probably uh, different types if you try different uh, configuration, right? You can see added types as well. Okay, the meaning of the, the messages here. Yeah? I think ho I hope you read them. And then how you can syslog here. Yeah? We can have our, okay, these are all uh, uh, devices that you want to monitor. You have router, you want to monitor your server, your mail server, and then you configure, okay, one of the uh, router as the uh, syslog server. So meaning every single thing that you want to capture, will be sent to the syslog server. Okay, there are seven levels just now, zero to seven, eight level. You, you may think, okay, I want to capture only up to five, uh, level five. Okay, we can do that. And rather than capturing all single up to uh, syslog uh, warning level uh, seven, yeah? This one. Okay, how we can do this? Logging, we have to mention, okay, what is the IP address of the logging host? And then uh, level, Trap. Okay, if I say five, mean I will capture level zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. If you put seven, mean it will capture everything. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. If you think that it's not important to capture the warning, and then maybe up to level four. Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. So we type four here. Uh, source interface meaning, okay, what interface that will send that to? Yeah. For example, if you are, you are con configuring this router, the source interface will be G01. Because this is where we will send our login okay, to the server. Right? Okay, SNMP. Okay, there's another protocol we call SNMP. We ha you have to enable them on all the devices that you want to enable SNMP. And then one of them will become the SNMP manager. Yeah. Okay, the way the, the SNMP work, uh, hopefully you will learn this here. Yeah, in uh, I hope you read, read, them, read them in the curriculum. Okay, there, uh, in order for you to co configure, okay, you want to, for example, okay, I want to capture interface of the Cisco, yeah? So you have to enable number two, uh, sorry, one, three, six, dot one dot four dot one dot nine dot two dot two okay okay impossible for us to remember but this are uh, already come in uh, what they call database yeah you are configuring cisco database you will you will download the mib for the cisco device okay? so once you type that in your sys uh, sys uh, what they call snmp uh, application okay you have this option they will show you this automatically, right? Okay, so, so they call it MIB, yeah, database. Okay, the different version of SNMP, the most secure version is basically an SMP version 3. They will have encryption. Yeah. The rest, you can see, they have no encryption. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 1 and 2, there's no option of encryption, but for SNMP 3, 
you have the option to implement encryption or you will uh, have the option not to choose the encryption. But the option is there. Huh? Rather than one and two, the original, uh, the first two, they, there is no option of encryption. Right? But this one they have. Yeah? And then for authentication, there are other options. This one simply like a password. Community string is simply like a password. Okay. I think you will do this as well in your exercise. Yeah. Uh, the concept is basically send a trap. We can uh, anything uh, trap after uh, level five. Okay, need to be sent to SNMP manager. So automatically, if there is a warning uh, of five uh, and below, it will be sent to the SNMP manager. Right? So this is uh, how you configure. Okay, what level just now remember? Okay, what level you want to capture? Yeah, so in SNMP, you can do that as well. Yeah? And then uh, ministry, yeah, we have the option of encrypted yeah, so that people who sit in between, they won't be able to read them. Uh, how do you configure? Okay, I think I will go this quickly. Yeah, I don't think if I show you here, you will remember. Uh, the way to memorize this is basically to do the exercise. Yeah? So I hope you do the exercise and then you come back to this. Yeah? Uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, just define, okay, what uh, access, yeah? the IP address that you want to capture, for example, yeah? uh, you want to allow. Yeah? Uh, and then uh, view, uh, the, actually they have example. Okay, this one. Access list standard, okay, you want to permit uh, 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 this network okay? to permit this network and then you want you will have to configure the view the group admin the user okay? the user of the uh, the SNMP right because you need to have both and have the same uh, user right? okay I'll just quickly yeah this one SNMP run yeah you can see whatever you have configured yeah? And then network time protocol. Okay, why is it important to have an NTP? You want to capture uh, the logging message, but what if the time is wrong? Okay. okay today, rather than uh, the 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 the, uh, the attack happened today, for example, they, they capture some uh, activities happening today, but the the time is wrong. Okay. So you you can you can basically yeah, take action, right? Because you thought maybe okay the the time is is already passed, yeah? which uh, supposed to be now, for example. Okay, so that's why the time is also very important when we uh, discuss about logging. We you discuss about SNMP, so definitely they will discuss about an uh, NTP. Okay, the, how do you configure NTP? You will get the time. For example, this router, we say, so everybody get time from me. Okay. This is the one maybe, okay, main router. You know that this is very secure router. And then all the routers that you want to implement inside your organization have to get the time from this. But this router, you may configure, okay, get get from, from the uh, NTP server uh, outside, okay. uh, secure NTP server. Okay, this is how you configure NTP master. Okay, this is for router one. Uh, router two now will get the time from 10.10.10.1 from this router. Okay, this router. So every time you change the time of this router, R2 will get the updated time. Okay, and then we can also authenticate. Right? We want to protect the NTP message. We can authenticate the uh, router as well, the NTP message, right? and then using automated yeah, perform, we can, uh, okay, this is similar to CDP, yeah, remember I said CDP at the beginning, Cisco discovery protocol, you want to know, okay, who is my neighbor, okay, once you configure and then you can show CDP, okay, let me see whether I can do this, yeah? show CDP neighbors, so I am, okay, I am, Router one, this is router one. Yeah, router one. I'm inside this router one. Okay, I will type show CDP. I don't know whether this. Okay, so the CDP numbers. Okay, my neighbors is actually R two. You see, I'm router two. 
Actually, there are some other details. Yeah? I can remember now the command. See, detail. Is there any detail? Okay, detail, detail. See? Okay, now I know. Okay, uh, my neighbor router 2 is up. The router is running this version of this version of iOS. Yeah. So what is the danger of this? Okay. So basically, if you manage to get this, now you can quickly search in the internet. Okay, what is the weakness of this version 5, 15.7? Okay. That is why very, very important as a network admin, as a security admin, we always have to patch our operating system for our application. Yeah. We don't want people, uh, other people uh, who, who, who are the first one to find them. Yeah. So let's say they search, okay, you are now implementing this. Okay, they search in the internet. Okay, they want to see what are the weakness yeah, of this version 15.7. And then if they know that, okay, they now they know okay what what attack they can perform to that router, right? So this is CDP neighbors, yeah. CDP neighbors, okay. Sometimes it's important, yeah, very good. Yeah, you want to have, you want to know, okay, your router is already up or no. But then it can also be dangerous, yeah. At the same time, yeah. So rather than CDP, CDP is Cisco proprietary. You can also run LLDP. Uh, logic. Link discovery protocol, eh? CDP, Cisco discovery protocol. If I'm not mistaken, logical link. Eh? You can quickly search in it in eh? LLDP. I think logical link discovery protocol. Uh, uh, this is an open, eh? open source. So meaning other other vendors also they will implement this if they want. They cannot implement CDP because CDP only for Cisco. Eh? So type this LDDP run. Okay, once they enable LLDP, uh, other router, they have to enable LLDP as well. So show CDP neighbors detail, they will type this. Yeah? They have to type CDP, but actually the protocol running is LLDP. What means? Yeah? Now you can see, okay, the, my neighbor is uh, S1, switch one, uh, with this model, and it's running version 15.0, right? So you can see, oh, this model. You can search in the internet. Okay, what is this model? What uh, weaknesses, for example, of this version? Yeah, this is like collecting information. Yeah, you gather information, reconnaissance attack. Yeah, so you can do that. Okay, we have to. That's why we want to disable. And one of the uh, services that you may want to disable CDP, right? Okay, and some other services as well. Okay, auto secure. Uh, auto secure means okay. I want once you configure IP address, everything. Yeah, you configure IP address, and then after that you type auto secure. Okay, I, this one. Uh, I think you will do this in your uh, packet tracer. Okay, if I'm not now I can't remember eh, which exercise that you will do this. Okay, once you type auto secure. It will automatically implement some kind of access list to your router, meaning some kind of firewall to your router. Yeah, they give, for example, okay, they do, we don't want to allow packet from 10.0.0.0 come to your network from outside. You know why? 172, we don't want to allow packet from 172, 16.0.0 come from outside. Anyone can guess why 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 we don't want to allow that packet to come from outside of our network? We don't want to allow packet from 192.168.0.0 come from outside of our network, meaning from the internet come to our network with the IP address of 192.168. something something. Anyone anyone can guess why? You, you already learned session A. Because, okay, what types of password? The, the three range of password, the, the one I mentioned just now, what what uh, what types of addresses are there? It's not local. Ah, private network. Okay, Chris, Christina, private network. That is private network. Private network mean implement locally, like Muhammad Ikhwan said. Yeah? It has to be implemented 
only within your organization, within the autonomous system. I am in control of UM network, so I can use 192, 168, something, something. I can use 172, 16, something, something, or 172 up to 31, something, something. I can use 10 dot something dot something dot something. If I want to use the address only within my control, yeah. So I, if I were the admin of the University Malaya, I can implement that addresses. If you notice, your DNS server is 192.168.10. dot I can one or something like this. Yeah? That is the DNS server within UM. So if you notice, the address is actually private network, private addresses. That shouldn't come from outside of your network. So if you implement auto secure, one of the access list will be preventing the private network from your outside interface coming to your inside interface, right? Uh, so I just want to give example. Okay, what option there? There will be thousand of line, hundred of lines when you type the auto secure. They will just end. Uh, uh, ask you this this type of question. For example, is this router connected to internet? Yes. Once you type yes, they will ask you, okay, what interface is connected to the internet? What interface are connected to the uh, local? Okay. Once they, they they gather this information, then one of the access list it will be to protect from the private network coming from outside to the inside of your. Network. Okay, so there's auto secure. How you type this? Okay, these are the option. I don't want to go this. And then uh, so command center. Okay, the the visit will get the information about the outside interface. Yeah, this is the why why they ask you. Okay, what interface is actually internet? Yeah. Okay, and so on. So in the control plane. Okay, I mentioned this last week. We have control plane. We have uh, data plane. We have management plane. This is nowadays we view our devices into planes. Yeah, okay. We can implement. Unfortunately, this is not. Uh, this is beyond our uh, lab. They just mentioned this. These are things possible that we can do. Yeah, we know that control plane, OSPF messages, for example, routing protocol. They are under the control plane. Yeah, so we can control this message. The OSPF message, for example. If you configure the control plane, yeah. Uh, so routing protocol, one of them is okay. Sorry, this one actually not yet. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is the routing protocol. Okay, we can configure the routing protocol. We can in, we can configure security with the routing protocol. Before we just type router OSPF one, and then the other router also router OSPF one. Or two and so on. Yeah, this is locally significant. Yeah, uh, OSPF. Yeah. Then there you type network, network. Then there you don't. Uh, if you uh, implement in session A, okay, that is the only commands that we enter. But actually, we can do more than that. We can configure security. Yeah, we can configure security. You can type, for example, in this case, okay, I want to use MD5 at the message digest. And then I want to enable message digest authentication. So you mean you have you you give IP you give a password. On the other side, router two, we have to enter the same thing. So now now both end router one and router two, they have to know exactly the same password, the same message they digest that they use. Okay. Then only we can start to exchange. Yeah. Okay. Why is this important? As I said. Okay, if you have a router, you can simply plug in your router into one of the available port. Yeah, one of the available port. Actually, in our faculty, just imagine faculty, you can notice there are many many port on the wall, right? Network port. You can simply bring your laptop. Okay, connect to one of the port, and then you have internet access. But now imagine some people they bring their own router. With their own configuration, yeah, and then they plug into the the port. Okay. If we have we have no protection like this, that router will become and we it will be able to become part of the network. It now start will start to exchange information with the rest of the router, 
you can even inject default route. So we can even inject default route and then share with the rest of the router. And then everybody that want to go to the internet, for example, okay, have to come go through your router. Okay, that is uh, one of the danger that can uh, can think of, right? Why that is why we need to have this authentication. So both end they must know the password. If I were to do uh, that attack, so I have to know uh, the same password as well. If I don't know that, then I cannot become part of the OSPF network. Okay. And then this is how, okay, later when you do the exercise, you will yeah, come back to this one, key change. Yeah. And then the, this is the, main, the one I mentioned, sorry. Yeah. Uh, router policing, uh, control and management planes, and then we have data plane. So basically we have three planes. Yeah. I mentioned this in uh, 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 last week. So this is how we view our router of our switches. Yeah. Data plane simply will forward the packet. But behind this, we have control plane. Uh, we have management plane. Management for managing. Uh, this is where you run your SSH, your telnet. Yeah. For the control plane, this is where you run your uh, routing protocol. Uh, and then you, uh, what I call, you, you can basically, what it wants to, uh, to stress here, we can implement the uh, we can implement this what I call filter or maybe the security uh, security on the control plane. Yeah? We can implement security on the control plane. Yeah? Okay, how to configure this? As I said, this is beyond the uh, our subject. If you want to ask me to configure, I won't be able to configure, you know, because this is not I'm doing every day. But I've done this before. Uh, in fact, you can easily find, I believe in YouTube, yeah, uh, how the people, uh, how we can configure control plane. Okay, we have to type uh, ACL, and then we have to enable route map. We have to enable policy map, and then we have to apply that map into the interface. Right? That that are the some of the step that uh, need to be uh, taken. For example, yeah. So uh, if you, that's why I said I'm. Uh, I don't remember exactly okay, the step. Yeah, but it's not uh, something difficult to do, yeah? So it's something possible. But this, since this is beyond our lab exercise, this is beyond our syllabus, it's good that we know that, okay, this is something possible that we can do. That in future, if you want to configure, uh, then the keyword to search is basically COPP. You search the keyword, and then you know exactly how to configure, right? Okay, then that all for, for our chapter two. Yeah, it's so almost two hours here. Yeah? Okay, it's so almost two hours. Sorry. Yeah? Any question before we end? Okay, any question? It's good if there's no question. Yeah? So meaning that you either you already fall asleep <laughs> or you understand. Yeah? Okay, I, 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 I believe you won't be able to grab 100%. Right? Maybe if you can grab 50%, even 20, 30%, uh, 20% is good enough. Uh, it's good for the start because this is something new for you. For me, I already done this many times. Yeah. Uh, for this week tutorial, what should we prepare? Okay, you, you uh, just do uh, chapter one, chapter two. Yeah. Just follow the week. Yeah. Now we are week two. Okay, you are supposed to finish chapter two. Packet tracer and also your lab exercise. Okay? Okay, a soft one. Yeah, soft one. Actually, I mentioned this last week. Okay, just follow the chapter. If you want to do in advance, it's better because you will study first before you come to the lecture. Right? Yeah? Okay, so the packet tracer in the, I already share the packet tracer in our curriculum here in this spectrum. You can download this or you can go to your NetAcad and then download. Same thing, right? If not, then you can download this lab, the exercise, the packet tracer, and then source file, and then the packet tracer activity source file. And also you need to download the latest packet tracer. Okay. Now this packet tracer is very, very powerful. 
Yeah. Imagine, uh, I, I imagine what, uh, uh, what I use uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Compared to now, wow, really advanced packet tracing. Yeah. Okay. Just that some command, they are not supported and then they don't give the exercise inside your lab or inside your packet tracing. Yeah, sorry, for their packet tracing. It's not supporting packet tracing. They, 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 for example, the command I mentioned at the beginning, the, what they call, the algorithm type, yeah? the algorithm type, uh, that one is, the command is not available in packet tracing. But you can do that if you use viral image, uh, like this one. Yeah? Okay, oh, how do you submit? Okay, later I will create a link yeah, for you to submit. Probably in our uh, Google, uh, sorry, not me, the Microsoft team site. Yeah? Last semester, I asked students to submit in my Google Classroom. But this time, I will ask you to submit through uh, what I call Microsoft team. Okay? Boleh? Ni. Okay, come on, uh, come back on uh, Wednesday. I will start to give you your group members and then I will maybe start to initiate some uh, group uh, assignment as well, right? What is that? I cannot read. What is this? Okay, okay, you just capture screen, isn't it? All right, okay. Okay, sorry guys, I don't know what happened. It's suddenly, maybe I wrongly press leave eh, just now. Okay, so if no question, then I really hope you uh, study this and uh, uh, compare what I call the slide, the curriculum. Now you swear register, uh, use my the token. You should be able to register the uh, network security uh, class, right? Somebody is okay. No question. So everyone, you can leave uh, now. Okay, that's no. all right. Okay, thank you. See you again on uh, Wednesday. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, yeah, bye. Sorry, doctor, can I ask some question? <laughs> yes. Yeah, about just now the GNS3 you showed just now, uh, there's a laptop image there, so where should I get it, the laptop image? Oh, okay, this, this one actually image. Okay, let, let me show you. Can you, you can see, still see my screens, isn't it? Uh, now cannot. Oh, okay. Okay, because I was kicked out just now. Okay, I will say again. <laughs> Screen two. Okay, you can see now? Yes. Okay, this one, actually this. Configure. Oh, not configure. Can it, uh, go here. Uh, cast, uh, change symbol. So this one is from push and device. Oh, okay, 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 okay. This one, actually this. Cloud. Cloud. Uh, cloud. So we use the MS look right. Uh, cloud. And then, okay, I have option running locally or in my in my case, I have VM as well. Okay, I run locally. If you run locally, meaning you are connecting to your PC. Yeah? If you run cloud, it will read the cloud interface, not your PC interface. That's why you have to be careful as well. In my case, I want to connect to my, uh, my loopback. My loopback is on my PC meaning I have to run locally, right? Okay, once you have this cloud, then you can go here and then change uh, symbol. 
and then you can use uh, available symbol or you can use a custom symbol in my case i use custom symbol i download it from the internet the jap uh, png image right png image and then i don't uh, change that and i have this is actually my laptop i'm using this pavilion <laughs> so oh, that's for fun that <laughs> <laughs> eh? uh, that's one for fun you know I, last time i used dell so i have my dell image <laughs> okay this uh, this year i have uh, uh, I just changed to uh, HP Pavilion, uh, so I have this. Now I need to search YouTube for the solution uh, for the MS loop. <laughs> Got some MS? Here. MS? The loop back. The loop back. Ah, okay, okay, yes, obviously you will have problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you, you have to, uh, you already, you have to add your loop back. Yeah? Uh, add devices. Yeah. You run on your PC. Add devices. You have to add the loopback interface now under network. You have to add the loopback interface. Uh, then you have to restart back your PC. Uh, then only you can use that. I need to back. restart PC. Yes. You have to restart. <laughs> okay. I did restart. <laughs> you have to restart because if not, then the interface is not up. Because it shows that I I uh I'm identified. So I I, I wonder got some problem or not. <laughs> some? Sorry. Because I think that's so what it shows the unidentified. <laughs> unidentified network. network. Yeah, the look back. Okay. Yeah, try, try, try to solve it. I believe, so uh, normal should be huh? should be enable, right? Yes, yes, enable. Okay, I try to solve it. <laughs> uh, you can find the answer in the internet. Okay. Some okay. Uh, yesterday also I I share I search the issue. Uh, one one uh, pro issue and then I share in in the in, in, in the solution. Because at the end I managed to solve. I, I, okay, I don't want to, what was the issue, but uh, there's some issue. You know, we we try to share help each other. So I find somebody else have this issue, then I you know, probably if you search one day you have the same problem, then you come across that <laughs> solution as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Okay. All right. Okay. See you everyone. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye.